evening and welcome to church and we're going to join together in singing a song that's familiar to just about everybody leaning on the everlasting arms 285 in your songbooks if you have one home and let's sing to that best tonight church we're glad that you have tuned in and you are watching just glad that you are there and uh, we have a lot to even in the circumstances we find ourselves we have a lot to praise the Lord for do we not we sure do <clears throat> and uh, so this is normally the time that we have our prayer request and I'll read a number I list the names but I have some here that we're going to be calling their names and so we'll do that <clears throat> and then we'll we'll have prayer number of people we need to be in prayer for. We've been praying for these for some time and just continue to do so. Uh, Sandy Zinkovich, continue to pray for her. She's having some good days and not so good days. And of course, Brother Jim as well. Tom and Jane Abel, pray for them. Millie Dwyer, Roger Nina Houston from my wife, Jen Wilburn, and Jim and Ruthie Shelton, Brian Judd. <clears throat> and continue to pray for the Rhodes of son-in-law and their, their daughter that have the illness there. Dottie Bishop, Tom Galantine, Ann Brown, Nancy Brammer, Lori Malik, Jenny Pearson, and the, the Barretts, uh, we, they had an unspoken request. Some of you got it on your phone. They had a special unspoken request, and so continue to pray for that situation, okay? And then uh, Mrs. Karstetter's great-grandson, his newborn, and hadn't been in the world very long, need to pray for him. He's having some very uh, serious difficulties, okay? All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you, we praise you, Lord, for this evening and for the time we have to share the word of God, share prayer requests, <clears throat> encourage one another. We thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you for this means that, Lord, you've blessed us with that we can do what we're doing. <clears throat> and uh, God, just pray that uh, you'd meet every need. We're no doubt uh, tonight our services are going into homes where there's tremendous need whether it be uh, health or financial or whatever, but we do know that you're able to meet that need, and I just pray to your God that you would, that you would do that. Now, Lord, of course, Brother Shelton's preaching for us tonight. God bless and use him for your glory. And here in just a little bit, the ladies' trio is going to be singing for us. Thank you for these that are, Lord, continuing faithful and doing it, the singing, the choir, uh, the different groups. Lord, we thank you for that. Uh, and 
given to their time, and I know you're going to bless it. First of all, to your glory and to their good because they're faithful. Uh, Father, bless as we continue on now. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Now our choir will sing. <laughs> really I just found out yesterday of course you know two weeks from today is our 46th anniversary doesn't seem possible but it is and we're looking forward to it and especially now that I found out yesterday brother Kluth called me brother Gibbs scheduling secretary and uh, brother Gibbs is going to be making a video and we will be showing that on May the 3rd what a blessing this brother has been here for years and years and been a real blessing to Trinity Baptist Church and to your pastor as well. And of course, that is May 3rd. Now, let me encourage you. Call your neighbors or someone that you know and invite them to listen. I know that Brother Gibbs will have, and he's never preached a bad message. Never heard him preach that. So it'll be right on uh, target and be encouraging and strengthening. And so invite them to listen, okay? And then I just wanted to encourage our bus workers, please, folks, Use your telephone and stay in touch with these dear people and uh, <clears throat> just encourage them that we're, we'll be right back out there as soon as it's possible to do that. And then I didn't say anything about it this morning, but here in the several weeks, we're not sure exactly the date yet, but we are in the process. We are extended our sound booth and uh, all the material, the equipment has been ordered. We're going to be going live stream in our church. And I just pray that I want you to pray that God will use this in a wonderful way. You know we're going to reach people that we don't normally reach. And so, uh, but now let me warn you church members, that's not an excuse to stay home unless you're sick. I didn't have to say that. I don't want to tease you. Okay, but be in prayer about that, would you? Okay, we'll now continue. 
All right, we're going to do birthdays here in just a minute, but I want to take a moment to say once again how much I miss choir family. I'm looking Amen. forward to you being back up here in the choir loft, and I'm, I'm praying for that day that God will give us a great service. Amen. And so, but I want you to know we miss you. Amen. Yes. All right, let's take care of some birthdays. For this coming week, uh, there are three that I know about, and one of them is today, April the 19th. Barbara McDonald's having a birthday. And then Thursday, April the 23rd, Brother Peyton Young is having a birthday. These are a church family. He's getting old. He's getting old. <laughs> and then Saturday, April the 25th, Sister Kate Baum is having a birthday. And maybe you're just among those who are watching uh, on by means of Internet today, and you're not part of our church family, but you've got a birthday this coming week. And we're going to sing Happy Birthday, and we want to sing Happy Birthday to you as well. So let's join together and sing Happy Birthday to all of these. Happy Birthday to you. together and sing one more song. I was sinking deep in sin, but love lifted me. If you have a songbook, 413 in your songbooks. Let's sing together.
that. Thank you, ladies trio. Take your Bibles, go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, if you would. Continuing on in this series that we've been looking at on hope. On hope. And we left off last week talking about how sometimes tragedies and uh, circumstances and uh, bad times, trials, uh, come in our life. The first point was to alert us, to let us know that there is something wrong, something that we need to get right with God. Something Sometimes chastisement is the reason for it. And God, in light of His children, He is our Heavenly Father. And He is chastising us at times to get our attention, to let us know that there's something wrong, to alert us. And we looked at that and we finished that point last week. The next point that we're looking at is sometime these times come uh, to direct us, to direct us. I want you to look at Romans chapter 8. And I, I told Pastor earlier uh, uh, when he was preaching his sermon this morning, I was thinking about uh, the sermon that I was preaching tonight and how closely related they are. And I started asking the Lord, is there something different that I'm supposed to be preaching? Because it seemed like he was preaching my message. Uh, just from a different aspect there, but uh, the Lord is all in that, and he, he always puts that together. I believe that he lays uh, the message on the heart of the preacher that he wants preached, and so we're going to keep it uh, right down the line where we were planning for tonight to direct us. Circumstances happen at times in our life, uh, bad circumstances, hard circumstances, hard times, to direct us in a certain direction, and God uses that. And uh, I want you to we're, we're use this verse as the text for tonight. Many of y'all already know this verse. Verse 28, Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Now you've got to be very careful with that verse and how you apply it to your life. And we'll get to that later on here. Directing our lives, uh, all throughout life, we are making decisions in which direction to go. And it doesn't just affect us. There's decisions that we make many times that affect our families, affect our children, uh, affect the church, you know, affect our friends, uh, as well as our lives in particular. I have a, uh, in, my, in my Ford a Fusion, uh, the, one of the options that it has in it is you can push this button that will keep you in your lane. And if you start, it has on there, as long as both lanes on each side are green, you're in the middle of the lane. It doesn't do anything. But if you start edging, not paying attention, or drifting off a little bit, if you start going off one direction, the steering wheel will move you back into, that, back into the middle of the lane. It does it automatically. Well, if you get going too far off and start getting onto the line there, it'll start beeping on you. The, the, the steering wheel will start vibrating very violently, get, trying to wake you up and get your attention and trying to get you to move back into your lane. You know, sometimes those trials that come in our life, those circumstances that happen to us, we don't like them. It'll, it, it gets our attention, but it gets us to move us back into a direction that we're supposed to be going or where the Lord wants us in our life. There's two, two ways that we see people take these types of tragedies, these types of circumstances in our life. Some folks, unfortunately, you know, these times come in their life and they react to God in a negative way. They get bitter with God. They get mad at God, angry with God. Uh, and, and some circumstances you may have even heard and talked to people where they don't follow the Lord today because this happened in their life. You know, they don't believe in God even. They'll, they'll even get to that point sometimes because of a certain time that happened in their life and they, they were mad and angry with God because of it. On the other hand, you hear many testimonies of people who had these times come in their life and their life was changed forever after that for a, in a positive way for the Lord. How can two similar circumstances yield totally different results? And you think about that. The difference does not lie in the problem. The difference is not in the tragedy. The difference is not in uh, the circumstances that they were in. The difference lies in the person and how they react to those circumstances. I don't have his name. I can't remember his name, but a well-known media uh, uh, person, reporter. Uh, it, just here recently, he gave a testimony on a report in an interview of how he gave up on God after his sister died in a tragic accident. 
He had followed God, or God was a part of his life evidently before that, but after that happened, he just totally turned away from God, does not believe in God anymore. Another lady, I do have her name, Johnny Erickson, Joni Erickson, some of y'all may have heard of her before, she's well known. Uh, her father was in the 1932 Olympics in wrestling, and he was, he was in the Hall of Fame with that. Uh, she was a very athletic, a very active person, just like her father was, had a lot of dreams and, and the future of what she wanted to do. Well, one day she was out diving and didn't judge the, the, the depth of the water uh, the way she should have. It was very shallow. She didn't realize that. And she dove down into that water and fractioned, fractured her vertebrae between the fourth and fifth cervical, and it paralyzed her from the shoulders down. Paralyzed her from the shoulders down. Later, she, she gave a, a testimony of how after that time, while she was recovering from that accident, uh, of course, she was paralyzed. She would never get that back as far as they know. She experienced a lot of anger, a lot of depression. She even had suicidal thoughts that she, she gave uh, testimony of. Along with that, she even doubted her religious beliefs. And she wrestled with that for a long time. And God dealt with her heart uh, after a while. You know, she, I'm sure her family was praying for her. She had other people praying for her. And uh, she, she decided to just let God handle it. Let God work in her life. See what direction God was going to take her with this. It wasn't long she started painting with her teeth. She'd hold the brush in her teeth and she'd do paintings. Uh, her paintings are very famous today. Uh, they, they sell them, and uh, she, she was able to start doing that. She started writing books with a voice recognition. Of course, the modern technology we have today with voice recognition, uh, she writes, she's written over 40 books today. She's also started a Christian ministry called the Johnny and Friends Disability Center. She has a radio talk show uh, just to encourage people. Uh, just a, a wonderful testimony, a, an outcome that you see from a very tragic thing, thing in somebody's life. What was the difference between those two people? One person completely turned away from God, denied God after that. The other person embraced him and allowed God to take her in a direction that she's greatly used even today. You know, many times, and we looked at this already, we look at... Search for an answer why. When the question we shouldn't be asking God is why, we need to focus on the who, on God himself. What is God trying to do? What direction, and, and what we're looking at now, what direction is God trying to move us in? I want you to go to 2 Corinthians. I'm going to be looking at several passages tonight, so keep your Bibles handy. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Look in verse 8 and 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Look in verse 8 there. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. You see the situation that Paul was in there, how, how much in despair they were. But look at verse 9. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raiseth the dead. Amen. You take a look, take time to look and think about that verse right there. They were at line, you can say in terms that we would use today, they were at the end of the rope. Didn't know where to go from here. Didn't know where to turn it. Didn't know if they can take anything more. It says that it was above strength. It was pressed out of measure. They even despaired of life, it says there in verse 8. But then in verse 9, Paul realized the who. It's not the what that's going on around them. It's not all the circumstances that they're surrounded by, not all the, the tragedy or the bad situation or whatever it was. It's who they were trusting in that would get them through this. Amen. And they said right there, not trust in ourselves, but in God. But in God. Flip over a few pages to chapter 12. Of course, this is when Paul, we, we looked at this passage last week. He was asking God to remove the thorn in the flesh that he had. The Lord would not do it. And look at God's answer to him here. 
Verse 9, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, look at Paul's reaction here. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Mm. We see Paul two times here. Two, test, two times he gave testimony of not looking at the circumstances that he was in. Not having a pity party for himself. Not having a, a bitterness dwell up within him. God, why are you letting me have, go through this? Why are you allowing me to have this thorn in the flesh and you won't take it from me? I'm trying to work for you. I'm trying to do things for you. But instead he looked at the who. And just trusted God. The one that was in control of it all. God did have the power to take this from him if he wanted to. But he chose not to. And Paul understood why. Because when those infirmities are there, when that situation is there, when that bad situation that you think is in your life and it's a bad circumstance, you know, right now we have a lot of folks. You think about this, a lot of folks are, lo are losing their job. I'm sure there's some folks in our church. In fact, I know there are people in our church. They've either lost their job over the past few weeks, or they're laid off, or their hours have been cut back. I was talking to some folks this past week. His hours were cut more than in half. He's had to go out and get another job. And uh, the, the, his wife, his, her job, she has to work the same hours, but her pay, she, she received a big pay decrease. She still has to work the same hours. How do you react during those times? Paul gives us a good example here listen god gives us the same promise his grace is sufficient and we just need to make that decision that god's directing us in a certain way trust him in trust him in where he's taking us from here suffering has a way of revealing how weak we really are you think about this if we're always strong and everything's on the upbeat and everything's always going our way who, gets, who tends to get the glory from it? If we're honest about it, we tend to take the glory for that. I'm doing everything right, and that's why things are going the way they are. But when things get out of our control, we realize then, listen, I, I have no control over this. God's the one in control of this. He's the one, and through that, we learn if we react the right way to God, we learn that we have to depend on, on God. Some of us have had some major, uh, or are going through, even right now, some major health issues. It's amazing how quickly you realize how frail life is. How quickly health can be gone, just like that. God's in control of it. A person faced with these types of difficulties, they have to re re react one way. They turn to God, or it draws them away from God. It, it makes them re reject God. So what does it do? It, when, when, God, when God allows these times in our life, it forces us to reevaluate ourselves. Who are we trusting in? Who are we trusting in? We're human. When something tragic happens in our life, when things get thrown out of kelter and things get thrown out of order in our lives... We tend to panic, we tend to fret, we tend to what we call worry. We use that word a lot. How often have we worried over things over the past few weeks? How many, how many of us have <clears throat> intended on leaving the house and we had to take precautions because of our worries? You think about this. Some folks are so worried over things... And, and, and I understand, we've got to be careful. We've got to use wisdom, you know, and, and, and use our brains that God's given us to do things the right way, take precautions. But with what's going on, for example, in the past few weeks, God did not intend for us to live a life of worry over everything that's happened the past few weeks. Right. That's not God's intention over this. We can focus on despair of our situation, or we can look for hope and direction in God. Look for His plan. Let me just ask you, and of course, I understand you can't answer right now, but think to yourselves, 
How many of us have asked God or looked to see what direction God has taken our life over the past few weeks? Those of y'all that have lost your job. Those of us that have, we have lost, we have loved ones, that, that family members, friends that have gotten this virus. Uh, some of us are in some dire circumstances because of what's happened over the past few weeks. Some of us, it's not even related to what's happened over the past few weeks, but there's circumstances in our life that's changed our way of life as we knew it before. Have you asked, have you looked and stopped and prayed and asked God what direction is he trying to say, take you from here? What is he trying to do in your life? Now, maybe we, we looked at before how, you know, sometimes it's to alert us about things. You prayed, you've asked God, and, you know, just like David did, you asked God to search your heart to see if there's any wicked way in you, and you, you've done that, and there was no sin there. Then what direction is God, what, where is God trying to lead you from here? Why don't you go to Romans chapter 5. Several verses here I'd like us to look at. Romans chapter 5. Look in verse 5. Romans chapter 5. Start in verse 5 there. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Now keep reading here. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Who for scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love <clears throat> excuse me, toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. You know, even while we were yet in our sin, that's when Christ gave us hope. That's when he died for us. How much more is he willing to, how, how much more hope should we have now that we are saved, that we're a child of God? This is why we were lost, while we were in our sin. This is what God, what Christ did for us. But what about now? You think, uh, sometimes even, I guess we get in our head or we just forget, you know. God saved us. We're a child of God now. If he loved us before we were saved, how much more, how much more will he do? How much more hope does he give us even after salvation? Go to chapter 8, verse 18. This is where we opened up. But I want us to get the full text, the full context of, of these verses, that word, verse there in verse uh, 28 that we read to start out the, the service. But I want you to go back to verse 18, and I want you to get a, a holding of the context here. Verse 18, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to, to wit, the redemption of our body. Now keep paying attention here to what we're reading here. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Now with all saying, saying all that, now we get down to that verse that we read in the beginning. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, for to them who or to them who are the called according to his purpose. Amen. You know, as we reflect back on what's been going on and what's been going on in your life, know that you have hope. 
Amen. But you need to look for it in the right place. It's found in God. If, you, if you're one that has lost your job or your job's been changed in some way over the past few weeks, you, you realize now that your hope is not in your, in your job. Your hope's not in your paycheck. Your hope's in God. Those that have health problems, they, when they pray about this and they ask God to help them with this and give them peace about it, they find that their hope is not in their health. Their hope is not even in the doctor. It's not in the medicine. Their hope is found in God. You know, and, and, and that can be said time and time and time again in every area of our life that we realize that our hope is not found in ourselves. The hope that we, that we look for, uh, even when we were lost, the hope that we were looking for was not found in our own works. It was found in Jesus Christ. And that's true in every area of life. Our hope is found in God and God alone. We'll close with this last part right here. Uh, Pastor touched on this this morning in Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, we were looking at uh, Joshua, of course, this morning, and the, when they were going around Jericho and the faith that they had there. Hebrews chapter 11 is full of all kinds of people that had faith in God, kinds of examples that had faith in God. No matter this, what the situation is, you will never go wrong with putting your faith in God. Putting your faith in God will never lead you the wrong direction. These people put their faith in God and some of them were taking, taken into a circumstance they would rather not have been in. Uh, they, they, they were brought into a circumstance where you think of, of uh, Noah. I think Pastor talked about Noah a couple weeks ago. You know, Noah, between the time God told him that he was going to send a flood and the time it actually happened was 120 years. You know, for 20, 120 years, he, was, he, he, he practiced that faith that God was going to do what he said he was going to do. For 120 years, he had to practice that faith and hope for it. That was his hope, that God was going to fulfill his promise. You know, I find it you know, one of the most difficult things in the ministry is and in, 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 in the Christian life, not just in the ministry, but I think one of the difficult things for us to do is waiting on the Lord. Yes. Waiting on the Lord. We like things to be done, especially the day we live in. Things got to be done now. Instant. Right now. Right now. And that's not God's timing all the time. I remember when we uh, were starting our church down in Aguada, and uh, we, we rented the place, and we were meeting there. For the first six months, I preached to my wife, Kasaya, who was about three years old at that time, and A.J. was one. When A.J. would start crying and need to be fed or change a diaper, I had to stop while I was preaching. Kasaya Kelly would go back there and change the diaper, do whatever he needed to do, and then come back out. I'd pick up where I left off. But for six months, we prayed and we prayed and we prayed for God to send somebody to the church, to have somebody else to preach to. And we were out on visitation. I mean, like I said, Kasaya was about three, A.J. was one. And that we bought this wagon, and we hauled that wagon. You remember, Brother Carter, what it was like out there, just mountains and hills everywhere. We hauled that wagon all over those mountains. Wore the wheels off of it, passing out flyers and tracks and witnessing to people, inviting them to church. Six months into it, we finally had one lady come. One lady finally came. And she came for a couple of weeks. Didn't come anymore. About a month later, we, start, we, we ran into Luis, the Sanchez family. And they started coming, and that was the first roots, I guess, the first uh, starting of, of Guada Baptist Church down there. I couldn't, I mean, that was just for six months before we saw a result. Could you imagine preaching, Pastor, for 120 years? And even still, the only ones that responded was his family. That's it. Wow. That's it. Abraham waited a hundred years for a son. Joseph was wrongfully imprisoned after being sold into slavery by his own family. Moses waited until he was 80, till he saw what God was actually had his purpose in his life of, of setting the people, uh, Israel, free from Egypt there out of bondage. 
Others like Gideon, Samson, David, Samuel, they saw God do wonders in their life, but it was after they went through it. David fought Goliath. He had to run away from Saul, had to hide from Saul before he finally got to what God wanted to do with him in his life. Gideon. Remember in our study on Gideon, where, where, where did God find Gideon there? He was hiding behind a, a, a wine press, threshing grain, scared to death. Some of these folks suffered tragedies to see where God wanted them, what God's purpose for them was in their life. God's plan for them, for some of them, was long range. Something you think of Abraham, he was promised a nation from his seed. He never saw that while he, left, while he lived in his life. Sometimes God wants us to look beyond our immediate circumstances, to be patient and wait on the Lord, Amen. to see things in his timeline, just trust him with it, to force us, they force us to ask questions that change us, change our direction down the road. Through the questions that arise, what comes as a result? A more stable life in the Lord. Somebody that's more Christ-like. Somebody that's rooted firmer in their faith. We'll close with this verse right here. We'll go back to Romans chapter 8 again. We read it a few minutes ago. Verse 18 there, Paul Remember what he said there in that verse. It says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Keeping the right view and perspective with what God's trying to do in our life. Part of this study on hope and, and, and things that happen in our life, let me encourage you tonight as we close right here. Just a moment, I'm going to pray, and I just want to challenge you. Where is your hope now? You say, I, 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 with the last sermon, last couple of sermons, I know there's, there's not a sin in my life that God's trying to get my attention about. Well, let me ask you this. Is God trying to change your direction? Is God trying to bring you closer to Him? Is there something in the future maybe God's trying to teach you right now through the circumstances that are here right now, to make you a better person for Him in the future. You know, often, if we react the correct way, circumstances, bad circumstances, health issues, and tragedies, draw us closer to God than we were before. God allows those things to happen, but we need to remember, keep it in, just like Paul did. You know, he had to keep in mind, you know what, I've asked God to remove this thorn in the flesh, it didn't happen. God's not going to do it. He wants something better of it. And he made something better of Paul because of it. When they were in that situation, whatever the situation was, they're in Corinthians. They were in despair for their own life. But they trusted in God. And obviously God brought them through that. Where is your hope found tonight? Be sure that your hope just like you had to do for salvation. You had to trust Christ and Christ alone for your salvation. In every circumstance in life, we need to realize that that hope is only found in Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you for all that you do for us. Lord, we thank you for the hope that we have in you. God, I know there's some folks out there right now that are going through some tough times. We talked about several circumstances with people losing their jobs here lately, Lord, their finances not coming in like they would normally would. Lord, and people getting sick around us. Some folks even passing away because of what's going on. There's some folks in our church that just have ongoing health issues that they've had for a long time. God, help us to realize and help those folks to realize you are still in control of all of it. And God, you let things happen for a reason. You have a purpose in it. Just like we see in the life of Paul so many times and many other characters throughout the Bible, we see it, that you allowed certain things to happen for a specific purpose all the time. 
And God, sometimes it was like what we were talking about here tonight, to direct us in a certain way. Whether to make us more Christ-like, uh, to, to lead us in a certain direction in our life, Lord, to, uh, to live for you more, or to, to work in a ministry for you, whatever it might be. God, I just pray that you will just help us tonight to realize that, that our hope is found in you and to trust you in that. Just leave it there. To put our faith in God and trust you with it. And God, to understand that you will bring about a better life in us because of it. Help us to trust you. Lord, I pray if there's one out there tonight, Lord, that does not know you as their Savior. God, I pray that they'll trust you. Ask for forgiveness of their sins. Repent of their sin. And trust you as their Savior. To save them tonight. God, I pray that you just bless us. Lord, we do thank you for all that you do. I pray that you'll bless us this week and the week we have to come. Lord, you know our hearts. We want to meet you back here again real soon. God, like Pastor told us to, help us to pray for our governor. Move his heart. Lord, give him wisdom in what needs to be done for our state. Help our president. Give him wisdom in what needs to be done for our country. And God, we look to you for you to see, look to see you do great things. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen.